All right, welcome everyone to this week's Zojo webinar. I am Paul Lefevre, the Zojo Developer Evangelist, and I am extremely pleased to again have our special guest, Bob Keeney, as this week's guest speaker for the Zojo webinars. He's going to be talking about his shorts reporting tool that allows you to create reports, lots of reports, for use with Zojo. So Bob, thank you, the floor is yours. All right, thank you, Paul. Welcome everybody. As Paul said, my name is Bob Keeney. I am the founder of Bikini Software. We are a consulting firm located just outside of Kansas City, and we have been doing consulting for about 15 years now. And if I said it was 100% Zojo based, that would probably be about right. Occasionally we do something a little different, but for the most part, nothing but Zojo uh, all the time. And one of the things that we've always struggled with for many years was reporting. So um, about three years ago, we introduced our shorts reporting tools. It was a set of classes that allows us to, uh, to create reports via code. And uh, now I'm gonna show you some, some new stuff. So let's talk about the agenda first. Uh, we'll talk about what our basic user needs are with reporting. This is pretty basic stuff. Uh, we'll get into the uh, bikini shorts report designer. We'll talk a little bit about doing reports via code, and then we'll follow up with some Q&A. Now, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the Q&A box, and we'll see if we can't answer them uh, when we get a, get a break. So let's start with what we want in reporting tools. Well, for most modern applications, the, the thing we want the most is print preview. And we do this for a number of reasons, but the first thing is to make sure that the data is correct. There's nothing worse than trying to print a report that's a thousand pages long only to realize that you picked the wrong data, picked the wrong year, picked the wrong whatever. So we don't want to waste paper. And then obviously, you know, what you see is what you get or as close as possible um, is what we want to see. So the, the final, format of the report is what we want to see on screen. And then we want to see the printed version, and this should match the preview uh, as much as possible. It's not always identical, but it's pretty close. And I would say most of the most of the time, the reason why they're not identical is because your screen is either 72 or 96 DPI, and your printers these days are much, much higher. So sometimes there's some translation issues, and for the most part, they match, but sometimes they don't. When we're reporting or when we're creating our reports, we oftentimes want to export that into another format. So the most common ones are PDF and HTML. And then I think the last thing that most people are looking for, I know one of the big things that I wanted as a Zojo developer for many years was to create a standalone or have an external report designer. Now, Zojo comes with a report designer in it, but I think most of us is, have learned over the years that it's not quite as robust as what we want. So I've always wanted a report designer, and you know, there's a couple out there, and they're they're pricey, but they work. And then the other one that we really wanted was to have report files. So one of the things that's not great with the Zojo reporting tools that the reports are compiled into the application. So you want to change a report, well, guess what? You've got to recompile it and, and send that executable out to all your uh, uh, clients. And even with the, the existing Bikini Shorts reporting tool, that was also an issue too because it's all done via code. And then finally, the last thing that we really, really wanted was to be able to have an embeddable report designer, and we always ship with an uh, embeddable report viewer, but the report designer was a, a, a critical thing that we've just released. So here is the URL um, for Bikini Shorts, and we'll talk a little bit about some various aspects of it. So the first thing about Bikini Shorts is it's pretty flexible, and this is on the code side of things. Uh, it's really limited by the imagination of the skill and the developer. Uh, we just said we've got a uh, desktop and you know, we, we can do reports on desktop and web. And on the website, we're doing HTML by page. Uh, we have a scalable viewer uh, in addition to our uh, report designer now. We can export to HTML and PDF. 
And it's all 100% Zojo code except for the Dyna PDF plugin. Uh, we've got variable height rows, uh, and we ship with the GUI designer viewer. The price tag for all this is $300, and that is, there's, you don't have to pay me anything else afterwards, uh, it's up to you. So I know everybody wants to see what's going on with the report designer, so let's just jump right into it. So I'm gonna be using the, the actual demo that ships with shorts, and I'm just using Zojo here, and I'm compiling it. I could have started with an executable, but it's easier to show things this way. All right, so if we go into the report designer, you can see that the basic design is pretty simple. Over here on the left-hand side, we've got a list and with some uh, sections. The objects has a number of things that we can drag onto the report. We can do images, we can do lines, ovals, rectangles, and text objects. This next section's tables. Uh, this will show us all of our tables that are uh, in the that we've connected to, and we've already connected to one. Our test database uh, has already been connected to in this demo. And then over here under the report section, we've got sections that identify everything that's in here. So here's our header band, here's our body band and our footer band, and if you expand those, you can see all the items that are in it. So obviously, as I've been clicking through here, the items show up, get selected in the report designer itself, and a lot of things happen. You can uh, look at, at various objects, you can drag them, select them, and as you, the selection changes, the property list over here on the right changes as well. Now, this is all pretty familiar. I mean, this is not uh, anything out of the ordinary with any reporting tool that's out there and is kind of similar to what the reporting tool in Zojo is. So, I've already connected to a database, but we can connect to, uh, MySQL, ODBC, Postgres, SQLite, and even KubeSQL. The reason why KubeSQL is, is grayed out right now, it's because I have uh, disabled KubeSQL in the constants that are in this particular um, uh, instance of the, of the code. So I'm just gonna connect to a SQLite database. And we've got our same table. I could have I could have just left it, but we can just simply drag and drop our things onto the page here. And I'm just gonna do some basic drag and drop. And you can do multiple select and you can do some alignment. And I'm just going to do another one here, create field labels in the header. And really, that is the easiest way of getting going. I'm gonna go and I'm just gonna save this as my report. We'll go in here and we'll change this to Gems Report. So now all I have to do is click Run and now it'll start generating. Now what's great about the report designer is that behind the scenes, it's really using all the bikini shorts objects that we've been using in code for years. So it's pretty stable and pretty fast. So we generated 141 pages uh, in just a matter of seconds. Uh, and you, know, you can zip through these and when you zip through these things and, and change it, they're all crisp. We don't actually render any of these things until it's called for. So we're actually re-rendering it whenever we say fit page, fit width, 200%, et cetera, et cetera. So these are, are pretty, pretty fast. So let's go back in, we'll go back to the designer here, and we know that we want to um, order our data by the gems. So I'm just gonna go down to the order by under the behavior, and if I click run again, we now see that under gem we have a gate. Now, that's a whole lot of things to bring back, 141 pages. I only care about things that are under, like say, let's just say pick an arbitrary number of 1,000. So we're gonna go under the report menu, we'll filter data, and now we'll look at number one, 
and I only care of things that are under a thousand. I click add and now that becomes part of the report. So if I were to save this report and then open it back up, that 1000 record limit is still there. So let's do run. And we see that we've limited it to 15 pages. So normally what you wanna do in a case like this is you want to group by the gem. So we can do that easily. So we're just gonna to go to the band editor and under our test data, we'll go, we'll click on gem. And you can see that we've now uh, got a break and a trailing uh, type band here. And you see that here. So I'm gonna delete that, move the gem up here, move this down a little bit. And now move that down to here. Now I'm gonna make this a little bigger. I'm just gonna do some basic formatting here. I'm gonna make this bold and we'll make this 18. And we'll expand that and save the report. Now when we run, you can see that we're grouping by the gem type and we've got a bunch of numbers here. So here's our details. So uh, let's let's go back and we'll sort by name on this. So this is going to be gem08 and then this one is going to be name05. And you can still see we've got our same sorting on the gems. And now in our band, we've got the sorting by this. So that's pretty straightforward stuff. If I wanted to create a, a summary of what's going on in this band, I'm gonna duplicate this. And just gonna put it down here in the trailing band. And I'm gonna to go to the aggregate. I'm gonna say, I want my sum. Now when we run this, you can see that we've got 10,994. Now, that may not be the format you want, so I'm gonna do a couple things here. So first of all, I'm going to right align this. And in the format section under the data field, I'm just gonna give it a standard format that uh, the format function that Zojo uses uh, is used here as well. And under this, I'm going to say format, I'm gonna right click on it, and we'll give this a that type of format. So you can see that we've changed the format of the date, and now this one is particularly uh, set up so that, so that it's formatted right. So it's pretty straightforward. It took us, what, 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes to do a report that had grouping with a summary and uh, did all sorts of things. Uh, doing this via code, this is probably a four or five hour project. Um, and even then you, you'd probably still be dealing with it for a while. So the report designer makes things really, really simple. However, there's a couple of things that we can do here that happens at runtime. And at runtime, we've got some really cool things that happen. Uh, if you click on a band, you can see this new uh, item under the behavior and that's called script. So if we click on that, we open the script editor and we're going to say, get the integer value and all of our items have a UID. So if we right click in there, we can see that We've got number 011, and I'm just gonna create a quick script here. And otherwise, we're going to say, we're gonna set the style of, number one, and we're gonna select a style, and we're gonna say red text align right. Click save, and now when we run it, 
you can see it's taking a little longer at this point because what it's doing is it's actually generating a Zojo script for each row that it comes across. So it has to create the Zojo script, compile it, and then run it. So you can see that anything that was under 500, we now have this red color. So this allows you to do some really fancy configurations at runtime that you don't have to code into the report. And I think that's really a really, really cool thing. Okay, so that's uh, there's there's a couple of whole bunch of Zojo scripts that you can run on this. You can set text, you can set styles, and things like that. Uh, I won't get into all those details, but you can see that the script makes things uh, incredibly easy. Um, let's take a look at the style editor here. Uh, you know, we're just setting the the align text right here, and you can go in and, and change these as much as you want. Uh, we've looked at the band editor. Um, and really, that's about it. There's not really a whole lot more to, to do. Uh, under the uh, relations here, you can, and this is a really bad example database to, uh, to do this. Um, we could set up two different uh, columns and then set the, you know, like just for example, say we knew that those were two, the, the related tables, we can set this up. And this is kind of nice because uh, once you've saved that and put this into the report file, you can have fairly disparate data that will attempt to uh, auto relate to each other. So you don't have to um, have foreign keys in your database. You can set those up manually. So the question is, will it do non-banded reports? And the, and the answer is no, it will not. Uh, if you want to do non-banded reports, you're stuck doing it in code. The other question is how to send external parameters. I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, at this point, the I, I think what you mean is can you send in the query um, for the for the report? And I think what you could do is because all this is really just a, uh, a a JSON string behind the scenes, uh, you can build that string on your own and you can send it. Uh, right now, the reporting tool only works with the, the Zojo database classes. Uh, it won't work with uh, the MBS classes, but uh, I don't see that being an issue for reporting. But certainly you can do the, uh, you can change the query up front. And basically what you would end up doing is changing this filter data. And that's pretty easy to get to in the JSON string. So, so that's the report designer. Uh, we can actually look at a, uh, the report definition. So in this case, we're passing in the string and we're not doing anything else. And, and I said, I, I put a breakpoint in here uh, on purpose. This is a hard coded string. So if we look at the K report string, actually let's run this. So the uh, report definition, you can see that here's the JSON, tells us what the database file is. Here are all the parameters for the styles that we've got in this report. Here are the bands, and somewhere in here there's gonna be the filter. And I don't see it offhand, but um, it's, oh, here it is, where conditions. So you can set your own where, where clauses in the, um, in here. And now when we go resume, you can see that we've got a very, very similar report to what we had, except we, we've got the script working with the entire row. So uh, Ruben asked, uh, for the for a parameters example, name of the operator or a login ID. No, currently, well, uh, take that back. You could potentially uh, add that in as a script. Um, haven't I'd have to think about that some more, but that might be the the best way of doing it. 
So some somebody asked a few years, uh, a few weeks ago, whether or not they can report uh, print directly to a printer. Um, the answer is yes. Um, I'm just going to send this to my printer and just going to um, open this PDF and preview. And you can see that we didn't go through the viewer. Um, we went directly to the printer. Um, the row number example, this is a new one, SC get counter. That's a new script method that allows us to uh, do rows in each, uh, in each band that we're in. So for example, the, the band that had the header for the gem, uh, we've got one, two, and that just keeps a count of it. And then we've also do, done the same thing in the script or in the band for the body. Uh, good question, Scott. Um, let me open up a report here. So uh, the question was, can we, uh, can the bands alternate background colors or do you have to do that manually? The, the quick answer is you can set that alternating color. Oops. And it just crashed for some reason, not quite sure why. Maybe I hit something wrong. First rule of demos, right? All right, so if we go and select the band, do an alternate color, we can do this. And we can even do something like this. We can do alternate color on here and we'll pick something obnoxious like a lime green. And now when we run, we can see that the headers have alternate color and the detail items have alternate color as well. So that's, okay, so Manfred asked, will it eventually work with an Oracle DB? Uh, yeah, I mean, there, there's nothing stopping it from working with an Oracle DB other than the fact that that uh, none of the people that have worked on it uh, actually have Oracle uh, running and, and working. So I don't think it would be a huge add. Um, but right now, there's, there's no current plans in doing that. Uh, you can certainly email me and talk about more specifics uh, and all that. Uh, the other question was, does it work on list box records or only database records? And the answer is only database records at this point. Um, if you want to work with something that's other than database, you can, there's nothing stopping you from doing anything by, or coding it by hand. Okay. All right. If there's no more questions on this part, um, I will do a quick demo of it working in web edition. So what we've done is uh, on the bikini shorts report designer, all of the classes um, now uh, will only uh, for desktop it'll work and it'll strip out the methods and properties that are desktop only. And so really just copying the, the entire directory over to uh, a web project and then the only thing that you have to do is change, delete the designer or the design canvas from the scroller subclass and make it a web canvas. And that's enough to satisfy all the uh, compiler requirements. Other, other than that, it's pretty simple. So all we're doing on the uh, report here is when we're shown, we're creating the report and we're running the thread. And in the thread, we're creating instance of DB wrapper. So that's pretty important. Um, we have to tell it what the database is and give it all the parameters. We have to tell it to load the schema, uh, build the path cells, and that's how it uh, figures out how, what the relationships. And then we get the actual report. So in this case, we're actually getting the folder item, reading it via text input stream, reading it all, and then creating the JSON item, and then passing that into the report PF class. Seems like a lot, it's not really. I mean, it's only just a couple steps, and then, then we actually render it. So it's actually pretty quick and fairly fast, 
Uh, and when we actually display the page, uh, that's when we're rendering it to HTML. So let me run this. And you can see that's a the report we've been looking at uh, pretty much uh, the entire day here. Uh, little different parameters, uh, but same thing. You know, so we've got the rows and we've got the uh, the formatting that changes, and we can um, change how this works as well. Now this is HTML, so it gets a little funky sometimes when you start changing the um, the the scaling. But other than that, it works fairly well. Uh, one of the things that we didn't do was show that a report can search. So I just did a search for Bob, and we'll see that on page one, somewhere in here there's a Bob. Oh, there's Bob. And then on page three, there's a Bob somewhere as well. So we can actually search the contents of a document. And eventually, one of the things that we wanna do, and this is not, even remotely in, a, in the near time frame, is to be able to click on an item and get an event back. So that would allow us to do drill down reports, but not even close to, to being ready yet. Uh, the Since this is already in, in HTML, we can do a download, and that down, downloads it to PDF. And you can see that here's the PDF. So pretty close between HTML and PDF, but obviously the HTML is not quite as uh, robust as PDF and the actual display. So we've demonstrated that you can create a report, we've demonstrated that you can have external report files that don't have to be compiled into your application, we've seen the report designer on desktop, we've seen and have it generate reports, we've had it generate reports on web edition as well. So that's pretty straightforward. And I think this is pretty cool. I think uh, the people that are using this have, uh, um, have given some really great positive feedback. And it's really only been out three, four weeks now. So, you know, it's gonna grow uh, as, we, uh, uh, as we use it more. So that's it for the demo at this point. So just to recap, we've got all these things. 100% Zojo code. We've got the runtime options with Zojo script. Uh, you can do images, and I didn't show any of the images, but you can you can load images from disk uh, by static, or you can do some stuff via database. Now, when it comes to the databases, it's a little funky because you've got to go in and, and make sure that um, it is set up right. Uh, it works with Zojo databases and saves to a JSON string and obviously Zojo databases uh, right now it's uh, Postgres, uh, MySQL, SQLite, and CubeSQL. I see no reason why SQL Server and and Oracle couldn't be in there, but it's just more a matter of us being able to test it. So Marcus asks, which version of DynaPDF will it work with? I don't know specifically. I know it'll work with light. Um, that's that's what I use personally. Um, since I work with the, the latest versions, I can't tell you. I see no reason why it wouldn't work with older versions, um, but you'd have to do some testing on that. So I cannot answer that uh, truthfully. So we've already talked a, a little bit about some of the designer uh, issues. Um, you know, can't do every report imaginable. I mean, it doesn't do sub-reports. Um, you can't create a non-banded report, um, and you have to use a database. So you can't just feed it data. You have to put that data into a database somewhere. So I mean, if, if you're using a non-database source, um, there's certainly nothing stopping you from throwing data into a temporary SQLite database and and just using it that way. I mean, I've done that on a number of projects where you just create an in-memory database, put the data in there, and then that's the database you end up using. I mean, it's not, it's not an awful, it's not a great solution, but it's not an awful solution either. Um, the Zojo script only works on bands, and we saw a little bit about how 
slow it gets. So the more complex the script, the slower it's going to be on all the bands. And obviously if you've got, you know, a million rows of data that you're going to be putting on this report, Zojo script is going to be uh, pretty darn slow. Uh, the designer uh, currently only works in desktop. Um, we've been toying with the idea of putting it on the web, but there's no, you know, no no time frame on that either. Um, I suspect that with the latest drag and drop features on web, we may be able to do that. But again, uh, no no current plans. So, as I said earlier, bikini shorts started. Um, three, four years ago now with nothing but, or being able to create reports via code. And these were all, you know, this is great. I mean, it's strength is that you get to control everything. So if you wanted to uh, create stuff that went from corner to corner, you could do that. Um, yeah, you know, it's really only limited in your coding ability. And based on the feedback of a lot of people that, that have purchased it in the last three years, um, it, it's really a daunting task for many users. I mean, I would say it's it's an intermediate to advanced programming uh, because there's a lot of moving parts that you have to keep track of. Certainly it has some drawbacks. You get to control everything. So while that's a strength, it's also a drawback. You get, con get to control where everything is placed, but you also have to monitor and uh, keep track of how tall things are on your page, create a new page, and then put put the new things on, or put the thing that was going to go over the length on the new page. So it, it's not, well, like I said, it's not an easy task. It's an intermediate to advanced programming topic. And coding is tedious. I will be honest. I mean, you know, we spent 15 minutes in this podcast doing uh, a banded, uh, a grouped report that's probably a four to five hour task. Um, and that's with somebody who knows what's going on, maybe three hours, but um, it's certainly not um, a trivial thing to do. So if you've got 10, 15 reports to do, most of them, most reports are going to fit in the banding tool uh, type range, but there are some that you just won't. I'll give you some examples of that here in a minute. So here are the, the base objects for bikini shorts. And you know, here's the base object. The document object is, is a base object. Uh, the page object is a base object, but the document, it holds the array of pages. The item is also a base object, but the item uh, is also put into an array into the page object. So, and then a number of items that we have in here, we have group items, uh, come back to that in a second. Images, lines, ovals, rectangles, rounded rack, uh, RTF text item on the desktop, and then the text item. And the text item is just a single uh, style at that point. So the reason why the group item is kind of a special item is it's actually a, an item that can hold other items. So when you create like a text item, it automatically has a dimension. So X, Y, with height and all that. The group item, when you create it, doesn't have any of that but it's an array of items. And so you can put other items in it. And as soon as you put a text item or a line item, whatever, it now has dimensions. So if you take a look at, at how we've done our example reports, we've created a group item for our, and I'll say this in air quotes, row, and we've got the line of data that's gonna go in there. So whether it's an image or a text item or whatever, those go into the group item, we create an array of those, and then those arrays get put onto the page and we just cycle through it. And we'll go through an example of that too. The style set over here on the right-hand side, that is the way we, we do our formatting of our items. Uh, we figured it was easier to create a, an overall style rather than uh, do the individual things. You can create style sets in code, but it, we found it, it was easier to create one, create them at, at runtime, define them for the entire report, and then apply them as we see fit. So the drawback to that is, of course, you need to know what your styles are up front. Um, but once you've got them created, it's, it's trivial to change the style of an item. And anybody that's used web edition um, with Zojo, we'll, we'll sort of understand the idea of style sets. 
So when we're actually rendering, and this goes true for the designer as well, uh, when we're rendering the actual finished report, uh, we have our document class, which is what we saw on the previous page. We create a view object, which gives, you know, which we tell our dimensions and our resolution, and then we tell which render we're gonna use. So graphics render allows us to print the screen and to print to a printer, or just, you know, render it to a printer. We've got an HTML render, which obviously is just converting our internal document into HTML. And we've got a Dyna PDF render, which is taking our document and converting it to the Dyna PDF. So, and you can see that we can go to a graphics object, we can go to a string or a file, or just a file, and it all depends on uh, what the, um, what we've set. Scott asked, does the font, do the fonts get added to the PDF when creating a PDF? That's a really good question. I can't answer that one off the top of my head because that's Dyna PDF and if a lot of it would depend on what its settings are. Um, with it may depend on which version of the Dyna PDF you're working with. I don't know if embedding fonts is is there for the light version. I suspect that it's not. So it may depend on on what it is. Uh, the other thing that I would say is if that's a if that's an issue, uh, check with Dyna PDF, and then you may have to modify the Dyna PDF render to to to, to allow uh, embedding of of, of fonts. Hopefully that answers that question. So we'll give you a couple of examples here of this of, of stuff that we've created via code. Now, this report itself um, is not impossible to do with the uh, reporting tool. You would create this top section that's the chart, which is a chart director chart uh, or from Monkey Bread, uh, would be in say the the header. Uh, and then the the thing below uh, is just the detail section. Uh, I don't know how I would handle this though. I, I'll, I'll be honest, uh, because the chart director uh, chart is done at runtime. Um, I don't know if I would. Uh, I'm not sure how I'd generate this, uh, which is the part that makes it difficult because Shorts doesn't have any built-in charting tool. Um, so you, you end up creating an, or needing an image. Well, do you put that in the database? Do you add that into the images uh, directory that we didn't really talk about it, but you can add images that it can grab from disk. So again, not impossible, but I would have to think about how to do this in the report designer. Now, this one um, would be incredibly difficult, one, because of the charts and partially because all the data that's coming from this is coming from different areas uh, in the database. So each one of these rounded rectangles is a different table, you know, so uh, you, you would either have to do sub reports or uh, do something else, but in code, this is, well, it's not trivial, but you can do this because each one of these rounded rectangles is a group item. So you can, create your subroutines to be able to create all those group items and then bring them together in the page. Um, and again, it's not very hard to do, but it's all code. Uh, example number three here is variable height rows. Um, trivial to do in the report designer, uh, but not all reporting tools will do that. And then this last example is really kind of a poor one because I, I, I have a hard time just explaining what it is. But the you've got two objects that are on this report that aren't in a group. So they're just placed on the page. So we've got the, the rectangle in the upper left-hand corner and then the blue rounded rectangle. Those span multiple rows. And, you know, in a, in a banded reporting tool, it's all about the band. And things that span multiple bands is, uh, is really um, hard because what you end up doing is trying to figure out the calculations of the item that's gonna be in each band. And so that's why this is an example. So uh, the spanning of rows is tough to do, uh, but it's trivial in code. And if we want to, uh, we could actually spend a second here talking about or showing a code example. 
All right, so let's go into the report RPT group menu. So we've got a, uh, a class here that we've created that uh, we pass in our record set and our value um, as, and we return the document. So we end up creating a new shorts document, we load the logo, we set up our styles, and we can see we're setting up our styles. These are all just properties that are on our, in our class. So we've got a default style, title, subtitle, et cetera. And then we go through, we set up our page, our page constants, and then we create a new page, send them and put in the default style. And then we go through and we add a page header to that page, which is a separate method. And then we you know, start calculating our height. So we have to get our page height minus our bottom margin minus our footer height. And we've got a row start point that we've created. Now behind the scenes, everything in code is done via points, which can screw a lot of people up. So thankfully on the Mac, you know, points and, and uh, uh, pixels are pretty close in size, but uh, that's, not quite the same thing in, in Windows, but you know it works well. So, and the reason we picked points rather than pixels was because uh, it seemed to be a, a static constant. So a point is a point regardless of what system you're on and what your display resolution is. So we calculate our width, we do the page bottom, uh, and then we have to, you know, we have to sort of calculate what our, our column widths are, and that's what this is. And then we go through and we create our array of rows. And a detail row is we just create a group item. Here we're going through, we're creating our text items, getting, getting the data from the record set, and then appending all that stuff into the group and just returning the group. So that's a lot of work just to create a simple report. And then we go through and we go, all right, let's put this on on the page, we have our, uh, our IY, and we just go through, keep doing that, and then finally at the end, we go through and put the footer on every page. So, I don't know about anybody else, but just seeing this makes me wanna go use the report designer. So I hope, uh, I hope that uh, uh, convinces everybody, but certainly the code is a way of doing some of the complex reports that the report designer can't. So I'm willing to take some more questions if you have any. Oh, there was one, can we have picture fields in the report? The answer is yes. And uh, if you look in the documentation, there is a, it's not an event, but it's in the report PF class that you sort of have to modify. So that, that method gets called. And I think the first time you try to bring one from the database, uh, you, what you'd have to do is set on the field, you have to tell it that it's an image. That's in the properties section. And then, um, and then you go to that method and you'll have to, have to tell it how you're gonna convert it. Because there's so many different ways of putting an image into the database. Uh, there was a thread on the forums just yesterday on, on the best way of doing this. Um, there's the picture value um, that's built into Zojo. Not sure that works with every database. So some people convert it to um, uh, base 64 and then bring it back out, do all sorts of crazy things to it. So I mean, it's really kind of up to you. So there's, there's, no, uh, there's no hard way of, or no set way of doing it. But if you continue to have problems, let me know and I'll, and I'll walk you through it. So one of the questions was, what other items do you have on the roadmap for shorts? Well, in the next release, um, we're going to do we're, we're going to release the web uh, generation portion of it. Uh, that came in. Uh, I just got that done this weekend, where we can define the report on desktop, save it either to file or to a database on the web, and be able to generate the report on the web without having the report designer component on there. Um, we want to do the drill down. Um, still kind of long term, will, will we do uh, have a web designer component? Um, I don't know. Some of that depends on um, 
our needs at the time. Um, for those of you that, that aren't familiar with us, I mean, we've been doing Zojo Consulting for 15 years. So we had a, a need for this product. So it came to be, and so now we have a report designer and, you know, it's, it's more a matter of what's the next thing that comes up. And then the question was, another question, can we use a JSON created by the desktop, uh, by the report designer on the web? The answer is yes, that'll be in the next release. Um, so look forward to that. Awesome, Bob, that uh, pretty impressive demo. Thank you, Paul. And certainly, um, if anybody has any questions, they can uh, send me an email at bobk at bikini.com. Uh, you can download the demo. Um, it's not quite as, as robust as, or it's not as advanced as, as what we saw here. Um, but I encourage you to ask questions. Um, you know, sometimes the questions lead to some interesting answers. All right. Well, I want to thank Mr. Keeney. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Paul. For presenting this webinar. Bob Keeney of Bikini Software, and the product is called Bikini Shorts. It's a clever name there. And you can grab that at their website, of course. And before we sign off, I do want to remind people that the call for speakers for XDC 2016, that's the Zojo Developers Conference, is now going on. If you are thinking about attending the conference, it is in October of this year, and maybe want to do a presentation or a session and save a little money on your registration fee, now is the time to submit your presentation proposal. We need, the, we need those by the end of February. And if you have any questions or need help fine-tuning a topic, you can always email me, paul at zojo.com. All right, thank you, everyone. Have a great day.